I know. Hold on. Wait. You gotta let him in first. Okay, go get him. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Four years old? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he sounds vicious, but he's not making contact. <laughs> he played really well with a German Shepherd that was here for a bit. Was there a lot of people down at the other dog park? Uh, have you been here before question mark if you just go down the trail it'll be the first one that you come across <laughs> you, you're getting tired already, huh? Oh, I met him. <laughs> he, he gets so worked up. Oh, just like maybe five, ten minutes ago. We we're just starting to warm up. We're meeting up with, uh, with his mom just to practice some recall exercises here. Yeah. Have you heard any news about the uh, the dog park in Stafford yet? It's not gonna be ready till Sunday. So. Uh, well, hopefully that'll, that'll be a good time for it to be ready. Yeah. Do you know where it is? Yeah, Mountain View. Mountain, Mountain View. View. Oh, I think, did you tell me? Maybe. I can't, it sa the name sounds familiar. You know the Sorry, it's been a while. You know the school that's like up there? Maybe that's why it sounds familiar. Okay, cool. You can get this guy some water too. Yeah, I guess that was it <laughs> after that first part. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Good boy. Oh, who's that? Oh, who's that? <laughs> They're like treats. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, the love. Very sweet. Oh, you're fine. Please. Act just like my dude. Oh, there Good. Down. Sit. Sit. So we were just letting them uh, play with a friend here before they headed out. Get, let them get some uh, some energy and excitement out before the lesson. Yeah. <laughs> He's holding his own, that's for sure. That might be like a behavior at like a normal dog park you'd want to be wary of. If like they were sensitive or skittish, right? Because of his vocalizations. Same with parents too, because sometimes they would maybe misinterpret that as aggression. But when you're looking carefully, he's not really making contact. And then also if you're ever uncertain, if a behavior is okay, then you always want to check on how the partner is that they're dancing with. If the partner seems to be okay with it, then, you know, then most of the time, then that's going to be fine too. But if the partner seems scared or overwhelmed, then you might want to give him a break or find him another plate. Good boy. Yes. <laughs> I know. We'll practice no, soon. No. no. We'll practice soon. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, oh. 
Go play. Go. Go play. So once these guys head out, we'll do a couple different warm-ups and go through a couple different things with them. <laughs> it's good seeing you guys again. I'll catch you in the neighborhood. <laughs> Are you over it already? You over your friend already? You ready? Huh? <laughs> oh boy. Have a good one. Yeah. Good boy. Okay. So we're gonna just start with some formal exercises for recall. And what I'll usually do outside of just the elevated bed, which is easier to travel with, is set up his crate outside and have him go into there for usually for place. Um, and then have him stay and then release him again. And then eventually we go from getting him from the formal position to just following us anywhere for a recall. This is a good environment to work on because the, the main dog park that he'll be at and a lot of people are, are one more down. And so this trail, you'll have people that come in and out with a bunch of their dogs and he gets pretty excited. So it's a good way to practice him hopefully redirecting his attention um i'm just gonna do it with normal verbalizations and his name at first and then we also have with him a gps collar that will beep and vibrate and trying to teach him to respond to that um just so that way if you wanted to within your um your fence line as well you can add in an electric fence to help with deterring him from escaping um, nothing, nothing is guaranteed, but between like the physical boundary and then having, um, both an auditory kind of warning before he gets like zapped or anything can really help deter a lot of dogs. Uh, whereas just having the invisible fence, if there's a strong enough distraction on the other side, like a deer or some dogs running by, I've had instances before of them just blowing through. And then also in the case of having a good physical fences is that they can still dig under or climb over them too so you would still need supervising so even with the combination of both I've never heard of it happening but it can definitely still happen where they can blow through so it's important so it'll be important that during the process of him being outside in any area to focus on practicing when um, when he's out there and recognizing what may actually cause him to go out there whether it's uh, us leaving to go to the other side of the gate or whether it's uh, a squirrel running by um, so that way you can actually practice those things while you're supervising him as opposed to you know him seeing a squirrel while we're inside not paying attention and he just jumps the fence or something but back to this here if you oh good boy i know Good boy. Okay, free. Oh, I know. Usually the hardest part now, especially when there's no distractions, is to actually wait for him to go and get distracted by something. And then this time I'll let you call him back to place for a treat. Oh, just place or come. We got, want it to eventually just be as easy as pointing to something. So that's the only consistent part. So when we ask him to come to us, it'll just be come to us. With its place, it's usually a little bit further away. So I'll start when it's right next to me 
and I'll ask him to place, and then I'll step further away, and then I'll ask him to place. And that way, eventually, you can get it to, like, place, and you, people will point to, like, the crate or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and chest her. <laughs> It and then release. Okay. And then during this part, when he is fixated on you, you can always practice heal, right, too. But for um, for now, I kind of want him to get distracted so we can practice recall. But like I said, while you're here, if you wanted him to just follow you um, and have him heal, having uh, either the position and the focus, have him tap or touch your hand while you're walking with him. And then maybe after the second or third, one, good boy. Heel, two, good boy. Heel, three, good boy. Then I give him a treat and keep walking and then I give him freedom again. So that's how you could practice a couple different things here. Good boy. <laughs> Either way. Good boy. There you go. Come on, let's play. And usually back at home, if you have a backyard, what I would recommend is having your place or his recall all the way inside like usually in right inside the back door or the sliding door and then um giving him his treat after he comes all the way back inside and then you can integrate easy ways of routinely practicing by letting him out before breakfast and then calling him back in for breakfast right letting him out before lunch and then calling him back in for lunch and same with dinner so that way it's almost like a built-in routine for them to kind of be let out use the bathroom and then instead of you know getting too distracted by other things anticipating them needing to come back in for their next meal and sometimes that can help a lot of pups too especially with parents that get dogs that usually you let them out in the yard and then they have a hard time trying to get them back in. Yeah. Good. And we'll just do that a couple more times and then after that I'll start moving the placement mat around. And the point of that too at first is to get him now used to going to one spot and now it's going to be used to figuring out where that spot is with us. So now integrating more natural recall as opposed to just one specific item or place too. The elevated bed and training place with one specific thing like the crate can make it easier for you know repetition and building quick habits and good habits. But eventually we want them to kind of come and place wherever we are when it's come and place wherever we point. So just kind of easing off of very formal recall in place and to very kind of more natural recall in place. <laughs> Good boy. And then the next time we recall him back in, we'll have him sit stay for a little bit. And then you travel, you know, maybe five to 10 feet out and then release him. So then that way you can also integrate sit stay and patience practice while you're practicing recall too. And that'll be something that we'll be integrating with the crate as well. So having him place all the way in the crate, having him stay, building up that stay, just leaving the crate open door and then having him recall to us, you know, in another room or outside for a treat. 
going back and forth. So really getting him comfortable going in and out, really getting him comfortable going in and staying, and really getting him comfortable listening to us during the entire process. <laughs> yeah. Good. Oh no, heel. Good. One more time. Good. Heel. Yes, wait. Good boy. Free. Oh, look, you got another little pup. Oh, you're just concentrating on the hand. Look. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. He sounds and looks pretty intense, but he's friendly. And if he's too much, we can go to the big one. <laughs> I know. You're excited. Come here. Let's let, let's let him in. I know. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. Oh, careful. I wasn't expecting that. Careful. It's okay. <laughs> but so good for them. Good boy. Gotta be gentle with the little one. Good boy. <laughs> he's so loud he'll do this for like a couple of minutes and then he'll calm down he's like with the other pup good boy he's not gonna hurt you. are you gonna hurt her you're not gonna hurt her are you no you don't want to play sophie <laughs> if you're gonna hide with me then we're gonna walk <laughs> Yeah, there's treats in there, but you can't have them. <laughs> so now, while he's distracted, go ahead and try to call him back to you. Bolt, play. Ready? Perfect. Good. 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 There you go. Good. good. And so that's how you help to build the discipline, right? Mm -hmm. place. Yeah. And, and like I said, if you guys wanted to hang out here, we were just practicing Six. until somebody small came. Oh. We can go to the big one. Okay. to walk and... Okay. We're good. He's just so excited. <laughs> he, yeah, he means well, but he's just very intense. <laughs> She's cute. There you go. So because, right, he got distracted and then he broke his, his uh, attention, what I would recommend doing the next time he looks back real quick is to ask him to reinforce the weight again, right? But we'll let them go for a little bit. And then after he gets some of that excitement up, we'll try recalling him again. <laughs> so this right. It might be one of those situations that may be enough for him to like want to reach out. But here he comes back. Okay. Good boy. <laughs> You're about to fall off. There you go. Good boy. Wait. Well, wait. Good. There you go. All right, and now we're just going to randomly move this to another spot while he's distracted. Good boy. And then what we'll do is we'll ask him to to play to place again 
and we're going to start off a little bit further and we're going to point so now we're going to do an assigned location with a little bit of distance hi i know you're too hyped up go oh. I'll let you go ahead and recall him since he's kind of stuck on me over here. Bolt. Bolt. And Twice. Might have to get a little bit closer. Maybe cut the distance in half and then try again. Bolt. Twice. Bolt. A little bit closer. Yeah, oh no, he's just distracted by something else now. Oh. There you go. Twice. Twice. <laughs> Some squirrel. Yeah, right? And that's okay. and that's like a that's what I mean. That's good and bad to work in distracting environments because you have to work through these things, right? Oh, place. Good. It's a shame it wasn't supposed to rain until later this afternoon. Stay. Come. Go. Oh, place. Stay. Come. One more time. Go. Oh, place. Yes. Stay. Almost. Place, stay. Okay, good boy. So you see how I started off close and then moved closer until he got it, and then I started moving back again. All right, he's used to it being right next to us, especially since we're practicing mostly indoors with the crate. It's usually like right next to us for the place. And so building distance might take a while. And I think most of that was also the fact that he got distracted midway through. So start off close to, close to the placement mat. And then every time he does it well, maybe take a step away from it. It'll be easier too once um, once it's something just consistent with like his crate. If you ask him, like a lot of people just ask them to go into their crate. Yeah, he does know crate and so what do you said. That's well, there you go. Thing. I don't know if he said would have been easier. Go ahead and give it a try. I don't, I don't know everything that like was, was trained before. So see if he responds better to that. Wait, so he gets distracted or just try it? Go ahead and try it first. Close. He's at least going towards the target area. He's just getting distracted with his nose. Good. Almost. Good. So now as soon as he gets on it, let's go ahead and reward him. So that way, once he uh, actually hits the target. There you go. Good. Good. So it's, it's about the same. I think he's still just kind of, he's just getting distracted with his nose a little bit. And whatever that was. Okay. Good boy. Uh -uh. Yes, good boy. All right. So I just put in a negative as soon as he moved off of it. And then he got rewarded when he moved back on it and stayed on it for a second. But we'll worry about positioning first and then we'll worry about stay and distance duration. Cause he's still in that part of the phase. All right, so, uh-uh, bed, bed. Good, stay.
Okay, come. Good, there you go. Oh, it's right there. Boy. Bed. Good. Oh. Yes. Stay. Come. Bed. Yes. Good. Come. So that's all we're doing right now is just higher reps of the placement and then after he starts to get that then we'll we'll reintegrate more of the staying and then the releasing so while whenever you're working with him if you're doing too many things and notice that you're having troubles with one go ahead and break it down and concentrate on that one thing for a while first and <laughs> Oh. Nah. -uh. Stay. No. Nope. Place. Oh. Good. Stay. Stay. Try to wean them off of it again. Place. Good. Wait. Good. Come. Wait. Bed. It's usually when you would throw it in the crate. Good. Stay. Come. Wait. Bed. Yes. Almost. Bed. Good boy. There you go. Yes. There you go. Stay. Uh uh. Stay. All right, free. Good boy. So now I'm just gonna let him reset for a while and then we'll do the next exercise. If you wanna practice a little bit more beforehand, you can, but that's just all we'll, that we'll be doing is getting him used to going to a position. Right now, also increasing the distance from that position and then staying in there before releasing. The next part is going to just be testing his reactivity and his sensitivity to beeps and vibrates to see if that is enough to help break no. him from uh, no. to help break him from all the natural distractions out here. Did you want to practice before we move on to the next one? It's up to you. close so what'll help is just saying nope a little bit 
sooner. Like, as soon as he starts moving his legs or he loses focus on you, give him that correction and then reprompt him to stay again. And that'll help keep him from completely moving okay. off of it. Nope. Nope. Bed. Bed. So now get him to stay formally. Yep. Now keep a close eye on him. Don't move too far. Now reinforce. Okay. Good. Am I breaking before I treat him? Oh, you want to? Oh. <laughs> Up to you. So if you want him to stay and you keep moving around, then just get ready to keep asking him to stay. But whenever you're ready to give him a break, stay. You can ask him to break, or if you want to give him a treat and toss it to him so he still stays, right, then you can do that too. Because usually that's what I'll do with the crate is I'll toss him treats into there while he's still in there and preferably in like a more relaxed down position. But this is good. He's still staying and he's still focusing. There you go. All right. Hi. What's the kind of collar that you have on him now? The blue one? Oh, it's just the uh, uh, leather collar. Oh, there's no device or anything in it? Oh, there's a there's an air tag in it. Okay. That's it. So same I same idea is the the link. The difference between the link is that you also can do location so you can track if he gets out or away and then it has the tone, vibrate, and light features as well. I think with uh, the air tag, you can at least make it beep, right? So it's better, better than nothing. And it's not um, subscription-based or anything, too. And depending on where you live, like if you're out more where there's less people, it's going to be less effective with less Bluetooth. But if you're like in a downtown location, it should be good in Fredericksburg. Um, it just kind of depends on what kind of part of Fredericksburg that you're at. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do here, so I'm just going to get a treat ready. And just like with his name exercise, I want him to know that I have a treat. And then I'm just going to remind him to come back to me for that treat with the beep. And with some pups, the beep will be enough to startle them. You might have to desensitize them a little bit to it. And conversely, with some pups, they'll hear the beep and it doesn't register at all because of all the distractions. Same with the vibrate, same with the static. So that's why you always test these things in a controlled environment like this or on a leash first before actually doing anything. Because we had people with problems before trying to get their dog to come using static and it startles them and they run off you know the other way and the same thing can happen with even a vibrate in some dogs so you want to make sure that you're testing things in the lowest possible setting as possible because we want him to be able to respond with as little as possible come good boy so you kind of saw as soon as i hit the tone he turned his head and then i just recalled him back in eventually we want him to just hear it and then start looking for us. So at first we'll do line of sight, we'll add in his name if necessary, and then the come command. But eventually we want to be able to be out of line of sight, so that way he has to actually start using his nose to find us too. That's a little bit more advanced, but he is a lab, so some of these things might come more naturally to him. And he is also, uh... Oh, okay. Did you, you 
Did you bring it or anything? No, the, um, when I first called for the phone competition, she told me not to use an e-collar for her, so I didn't bring it to the training or say anything. Okay. But if you would like to incorporate it, I can bring it. No, that's fine. Uh, do you know what settings and everything that he got up to? Like, did you need uh, static for recall? Or was he good with vibrate? Very. If you see the squirrel, then yes, I need the static. Um, otherwise, I just need the vibrate. Okay. So when, in those kind of issues, what you could do is twofold. One is conditioning him more on responding to, because he was very responsive to the vibrate there, right? Um, teaching him, because that was enough to get his attention, what that means. Same with the static, like more desensitizing and less of um, notching up or turning up the, the power of things. And then if that doesn't work, then start notching up until you find that level when he sees a squirrel, but you hit it and he instantly reacts. You want to work on it from both ends first, so that way he's properly conditioned to just respond right away, right? As opposed to needing those higher settings and those harsher consequences to be able to get him to listen to what you want. Good boy. <laughs> right? And so here is where you would test out, right? Because he's super distracted with something. The tone. Come here, bud. Good boy. Yes, good job. Yeah, that's right. That's fine. But you kind of see what I mean? Instead of needing a static, taking more time to get him practice and just immediately responding to something less. And then that way you'll also have more options later on in case, you know, he's got like a really high prey drive or something like that. Hi, how you doing? Look at the Dalmatians. <laughs> so now while he's distracted, it's a good time to practice the recall. Almost, there you go. So now this time, show him that you have the treat to help keep his attention and ask him to wait. There you go. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So when do you guys usually use the collar? Just for that instance? Um, I only use it in public. So if I'm taking him to a dog park or taking him really anywhere outside of the house um, where I would need like a strong recall, I bring the the color is like back up. Okay. And you use his name first and yeah. the beep, or do you go I straight to the static? His name, if he doesn't respond, I'll beep it um, or vibrate. I don't know how to go in between beep and vibrate, so whichever one it does. And then if he doesn't react, that's when we use the static. Okay. And typically, he's, I don't think he's ever ignored the static. Um, it's a hard one to only ignore. The time that he ignores the beep or vibrate is like, He's got to be very invested, and it's usually like a four. Right. And depending on the collar, too, um, like with some that I've used before, you can actually combine the two. So that way you can actually cross train and condition like the static into the beep. Mm -hmm. Like he hears the beep, and it also has the static, and it almost has the same effect over time. Uh, but that depends on the collar. I got the mini educator. She showed me how to do a lot of the things, but I forgot how to switch between which functions it allows. Uh, but it is the, the mini educator. 
Gotcha. Yeah, that's a popular one. Expensive. Uh, overly so, but the only the good part about that, like some other ones, is that it has the momentary and continuous. And so what I would probably do instead, since you had that, is use the continuous until he breaks focus and then release. Right? Hi, how you doing? Good. Go ahead and try to call him back in. Boop. Good. And like I said, so as soon as he, uh, as soon as he gets distracted, is when you'll want to reinforce that stay command or get his attention back with his name. So if he, yeah, because that's going to be right after he, or right before he usually breaks his stay. Right. Good. Almost. Stay. Boop. Stay. Bed. So the next thing to do to stay. prolong the stay is once you give him a treat, have another one and then reinforce right away. So he gets a treat and then you reinforce the stay again. And that way you can kind of string them along. Eventually you can do every other treat. But especially if he's breaking after he gets a treat, it's because he feels like the task is over, okay. right? So we have to give him a task right afterwards, even if it's the same exact task. Right? Boy, we'll see. Grab a couple here. Yeah, get you some some water too here in a sec. Usually you would do this with like heel, right? But you can do it with sit and stay as well. Boy. So the first time we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna have him touch, and then I'm gonna give him to treat on the second time, and then I'll have him touch, and then I'll treat him again on the third time. Touch. Good. Good, heel. Yes, good. All right, I'm just waiting for him to lose focus. Just like with the sit stay. Good boy, for heel, good. Heel. Good. So you see, as soon as you lose his focus is when you get it back. And the same thing with the sit stay. Once you give him a treat, ask him again to stay. I'll let you try that one, or you can try the heel. You said to try which? You can try either one, either with the heel or with the with the stay. We usually do it with heel, but. It'll work the same. Do I have to wait till he breaks focus to start? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can keep walking around or you can ask him to sit, stay. <laughs> there you go. Well, heel. Good. Now, before he gets too far, right? So a lot of it is just crisper timing. Yep. Just keep walking normally, having him heel with you, and then just keep an eye on him. Good. There. Oh, there you go. He, no, oh, there you go. Good. Oh, heel. Good, there you go. And then after the last one, then you set him free. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. So that way he hopefully gets used to healing until the release. The same as the, the sit stay, but heel is a lot harder for a lot of dogs. Okay, good. Now I'll do a demonstration with the stay part. And then I'll go get him some water.
Alright, we got a couple pieces. One, two, and three. Okay. Good. Good stay. 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 Oh, nope. back. Almost. Stay. I'm just really pushing it. Stay. Good boy. Free. Boy. So what we'll do is, yeah, I'll let you practice one more time and then we'll see if he wants to play a little bit and then we'll, we'll call it a day so we can get him back in for lunch and see how long he can stay in the crate after this session. I'd be pretty tired, so. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Almost, there you go. Now make sure you ask him to stay again. Stay. There we go. You always notice when stay. he starts to, oh, so close. Stay. You'll notice when he starts stay. to really settle into the stay, because yeah. he'll usually sit and then lay down. Stay. There you go. And that's why practicing in environments stay. like this is good too. Hold, stay. Almost. There you go.
And what you would do, especially since you have, and most dogs will have this problem, especially when it comes to squirrels, is doing an exercise like this, but then in reverse. So usually we have the dogs come and we recall him off of that, right? We want him with the squirrels and we'll do it hopefully when the weather's nice, have him set up first in his crate or in, um, well, I guess outside is gonna be the elevated bed, but having him set up first in a sit stay, having him see a squirrel and then reinforcing that stay. And then if he moves off, then he gets the continuous until he goes back on, right? So that way it'll help to keep him from impulsively chasing, right? While taking advantage of the rest of the training that he's already gotten. So it's kind of like working with it, but in reverse. So what it would look like in this situation is if we had him sit, stay, had a dog come by, and as soon as he tried to leave, I'd probably just use the leash too to help reinforce, but you can use the collar at the same time, right? Is if he stays, good, he gets a treat. He watches them go by, he gets treats. But if as soon as he moves, that's when he would get the correction if he moves off of it and then reset him. Another way that you can do it without uh, treats too is usually in the neighborhoods when we're practicing having him refocus on us first when he sees a dog, sit, stay, and then we release them to go and meet, right? So the, the treat is him temporarily paying attention and exercising self-control, and then we reward him by releasing him to go and chase the squirrels or, or meet the dog or whatever. So that's another way that you can do it without treats too. Um, the, the last way would be really good if you had like a long lead or something like that in like a park environment where you know there's gonna be squirrels. So that way he can kind of get used to getting some of that energy and the excitement out, but at the same time practice on that focus and discipline. All right, good boy. I'm gonna go grab him some water. Do you have any questions before I pause the recording? And we do um, let him play around for a little bit before heading out. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, is there, I'm not sure if this is later in the training, but is there anything like to correct the barking for a treat? Um, I don't know if that comes later when we like wean him off of getting a treat for everything. What I would do in his case is just because he's doing it because he wants the treat and for attention, I usually just ignore it. The hardest part is the extinction burst that happens because he's so used to getting attention and either us telling him to stop, right? He's still getting some attention uh, or having him, even if we have him stop, right? And then sit or stay and then we give him a treat. It still ultimately led to him getting a treat. So a lot of it is just really ignoring the behavior until he realizes that it's not going to be how he gets what he wants and then teaching him to either paw to get the treat at that point right um is one way that i've done it and then another way is also oh let's go ahead and set him up here see if we can have him sit stay even when the dog is coming by That's and usually i would do this with a leash at first but we'll see how it goes stay bolt stay I'll help you out too. Oh, sit. Good. Stay. But um, an anti-bark collar usually Stay. helps in that instance. And the kind that I use wrap, ramp up, right? So if he barks and I ignore it, then it'll give like a beep, barks again, it'll vibrate. I still ignore it, barks again, gets the static correction. And that way it kind of goes up the row, right? Just like with a regular collar. Good boy. Free. Um, just like with a regular collar. Um, <laughs> yes, good boy. And um, and so that... Oh, I'm wrong pocket. And then that way you can still ignore him, but it'll be a lot easier for most parents to ignore him because then he'll ha also have a consequence and then you can also add in, like I said, holding out your hand for him to, to boop with his nose or touch with his paw instead to get a treat or whatever it was that he wanted, like a toy to. Because unfortunately, that's how a lot of times trainers will teach them to bark is to give them 
something that they want, but it's out of range and having them in the same position. And then when they bark, they get it, right? And then you add in the actual command without, you know, luring. And then once they do that, then they get it. But the, the reason why a lot of dogs are trained that way is because if they're in a stationary position and they can't get to whatever they want, the next thing that they're going to do is either, you know, verbalize that, that either the frustration or the, the communication to get it. So that's probably, you know, it either comes natural or whatever happened during the, the training process. So it might just be reconditioning of behavior as well. And sometimes it just depends on the kind of dog and training that you need to do, like for protection we want them to, to bark, but we also need it to be controlled, right? And not him just impulsively doing it because he wants something. Oh boy. All right, I'm gonna go and get you some water.